Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Now in this video, I'm gonna be sharing eight stock buying hacks to help you save time and invest more efficiently and more profitably. Let's go. Now I've had a really busy couple of weeks and having that extra commitment working on another project has made me realize just how difficult it can be to have the time to continue pumping out content on this channel. And that in turn got me thinking about how difficult it can be to find the time to invest as well. Now I'm sure you've seen people talking about credit card hacks, house hacks and travel hacks as well. But all of the hacks in this video are gonna specifically be about buying stocks. All right, so just before getting into the first point, the first hack then guys, please consider liking this video. And if you enjoy the content, subscribe to the channel as well. Let's go. All right then, so hack number one guys is knowing the best day to buy stocks and also the best day to sell stocks. Just like with traveling, people say that Tuesday is the cheapest day to buy flights and Wednesday is the cheapest day to actually fly. Well, there's a similar concept, there's a similar theory when it comes to buying stocks. And it's actually Monday that tends to be the best day to buy stocks, specifically Monday afternoon. And some people call this the Monday effect, where the market tends to drop during the first few hours of any given trading week. This could be due to companies uh, strategically releasing bad news on a Friday, hoping that the market will somewhat absorb it over the weekend. And then it's towards the end of the week, either Thursday or Friday, which is the best time to sell stocks. So just to recap really quickly then, Monday tends to be the best day to buy stocks, Thursday, Friday towards the end of the week tends to be the best time to sell. Now I currently don't practice much day trading and I haven't actually sold any of my positions for a couple of months now. So this doesn't really affect me, but depending on your investment strategy and your goals, this might be worth thinking about. Also for anyone wanting to short sell, this suggests that Friday is the best day to take that short position and Monday is the best day to cover it. And just in case you don't know what shorting is and it's cool if you don't, it's basically when an investor borrows a stock from someone, sells it when it's high, waits for it to drop, buys it back and then gives it back to the original person and profits the difference. So as an example of how this might work, say that you as an investor came to me and borrowed one of my stocks. Say that you borrowed one of my Tesla stocks, which is currently trading for let's say $700. So you could sell that stock, you pocketed $700, right? You then wait for the price to drop. So say next week, the price of Tesla goes down to $600. You buy it back, you return me my stock and you profit the difference, which is $100. Pretty cool, right? But it's a risky strategy, so please be careful. It's just as easy to lose money as it is to make money because you could have borrowed my stock for $700. The next week, it could go up to $800. You have to buy it back for $800 to be able to return me my share, which means that you've lost $100, not made $100. So it can go either way. Please be careful. Now, none of this is for sure, guys. We could see the stock market either skyrocket tomorrow or crash, but these are the historic trends. And yeah, do with this information what you will, but the beauty of investing is that nobody really knows what's gonna happen. So although these are the trends, it doesn't mean that this is what's gonna happen next week or the week after that, if you're looking to invest in the near future. Moving on to hack number two then, is the best month of the year to buy and sell stocks. So we just looked at the best days of the week. This is the best month of the year. And this might be more relevant if you're a long-term investor who isn't looking to or who isn't actively investing on a daily basis. Okay, so here you can see the monthly average returns of the S&P 500 between 1950 and 2017. And as you can see, August and specifically September are clearly where the market shows a tendency to drop. So these are great months to buy stocks. And then you've got October through to the end of January actually, where the market tends to be pretty positive overall and potentially therefore, these are good times to sell those stocks. Now there are a number of factors at play here and one of them is called the Santa Claus rally towards the Christmas holidays. Basically, this is where people tend to be pretty optimistic because the holidays are coming. People have got their end of year bonuses to spend, all that Christmas spending. And obviously as well, in general, the press don't release as much bad news during these months of the year. And therefore it makes sense then that when all of the hype is over and consumers stop spending, February sees a slump. And that's exactly what this chart shows as well. So now we're in April and as you can see, April tends to be a very good month to sell because on average, prices have increased by 1.5% in April over the last 50 years. Now these are obviously historic trends which stretch over 50 or 60 years, but even last year, which was a complete one-off, we saw similar patterns recorded where September was the worst performing month and April and November were the best. Alrighty then, moving on to point number three is to set up a demo account or a practice trading account. Now this isn't gonna be for everyone, so if you're already an investor, you've already got your brokerage account set up and you're already trading, you might wanna to skip to the next point. But if you're a beginner who hasn't set one up yet and you're a bit scared, you're not sure how to, this might be for you because it's a great hack that not many people know about. Alrighty, so there are a few platforms that offer this and my favorites are Plus500, Trading212 and eToro. Plus 500 was actually the first platform that I used to invest. Um, and I did actually open a demo account with them years ago. So I'm not sure what their platform's like anymore, but back then it was pretty good. 
And um, if I was to opt for any of these three, I would go for Trading212. But if you're from outside Europe, eToro might be a good option. Now, the great thing about these accounts is that they're all free and you're trading virtual money as if it was your own, but with zero risk. I think eToro give you $100,000, Trading212 maybe $50,000, but honestly, the amount doesn't really matter because this is fake money anyway. And what it does, the best thing about it is that it gives you the confidence. It lets you see how to actually make a trade. So you can make a trade as if it was real money, exactly the same, you can put a trade in, and then you can sell them as well. You can make a profit and you can build that $100,000 that you initially had up to whatever. There's no cap on how much you can build it to because again, it's fake money. But it gives you the confidence to learn how it works and then to one day set up an account with real money and start trading with your own cash. Okay, then hack number four is to set up an investing ISA account or the equivalent in your country. In the UK, it's called an ISA. In America, I think it's called a 401k. In your country, it may be, something different. And basically, I'll talk about what it is in the UK. An ISA is an account that you can set up where you don't have to pay tax on the profits of your investments up to a value uh, of 20,000 pounds per year in the UK. And obviously that might differ from country to country as well. But in the UK, it's 20,000 pounds a year, which is pretty cool. Tax-free money on your investments up to 20K. Now there are loads of different ISAs available. They're not all for investing, so make sure that you open the correct one. If you choose a decent brokerage, and I would recommend Vanguard, you can do all of this directly with them within their platform. Now the other type of ISAs that you can get are called cash ISAs. If you ask me, these are basically pointless because on a standard cash ISA, you'll probably get around 0.5% interest. And if you're lucky on a fixed rate one, you might get up to 2%. Now obviously, even if you're gonna max out these accounts and go all the way up to the 20K, you're only gonna save like two, 300 pounds tops. So make sure that you get an investing ISA because this is really where you can make gains and save on the tax on those gains as well. Now there is literally no reason not to open one of these accounts. So guys, take note and after this video, go and check it out. And a great place to start is Vanguard's website. Okay, now hack number five guys is dollar cost averaging. And again, this is gonna be for long-term investors, less so for day traders or short-term investors. Now dollar cost averaging is an investment strategy which basically reduces the risk of losing money during a stock market crash. So say you had 10 grand to invest. You could invest all of that in one go, either into one individual stock, uh, an ETF or a fund, or you could invest it into multiple different stocks. The Problem is though, and this is an extreme example, say the stock market tomorrow or next week was to drop or crash by 10%, you've lost a thousand pounds already or a thousand dollars or whatever currency you're investing in and you're only left with nine thousand. Now there's always going to be ups and there's always going to be downs in the stock market. That's just the nature of it. But for exactly that reason is why dollar cost averaging is a great hack. Okay, so if you want to do this hack, if you want to implement this into your investing strategy, here's how you do it. You want to split your investment over time. So say you've got that 10 grand, instead of investing all of it tomorrow or today, what you're going to want to do is agree a period that you're going to invest over. Let's make it 10 months because we've got 10 grand and we invest one thousand pounds or one thousand dollars every single month and as i said before this reduces your risk of losing all of your money if the stock market was to crash straight away so if your initial investment on day one was a thousand pounds instead of ten thousand pounds and the stock market crashed ten percent you're only going to lose a hundred pounds now this hack is for investors with a relatively low risk profile and if you're willing to expose yourself to more risk this might not be for you because you could invest that 10 grand on day one. The stock market might perform very well. You might have done your homework, your research, it might perform very well, and you'll actually be in for a big payday straight away. And then with compound interest as well, over time, that will expand and that'll be even more than if you were to dollar cost average, which is just a safer bet, basically. Alrighty then, hack number six, recurring buys. Now, whether you choose to implement dollar cost averaging, or even if you don't, Recurring buys can be a good thing because it saves you time and it can also save you emotional fatigue, which is a big factor in investing. Now, a recurring buy is basically like a direct debit, which you can set up with your brokerage account. And how it works is you choose the interval and you choose the amount that you want to invest into whatever stock. So say you chose to invest hundred pounds every week into Apple. Your brokerage will do that automatically for you without you having to do anything as long as you've got the money in your brokerage cash account. One reason why this hack is so good is because it will force you to stick to your investing plan without you having to remember to do it every month or every week or however often your plan says that you should be investing. Emotion is also a huge factor when it comes to investing and this strategy basically eliminates any emotion because you don't get involved, it's just all done automatically. It's so easy to get caught up in the news. The news might say that there's a a looming stock market crash and next week we're gonna see prices drop like crazy. But the truth is, 
No one really knows when that's going to happen. And you can get caught up into thinking that, oh, next week we're going to, the stock market's going to drop. It doesn't. You think, oh, next week, next week, next month. But the truth is, nobody knows when this is going to happen. And all that you're doing by putting off investing every single month or every single week, or whatever interval you choose, is you're just losing out or you're missing out on gains until it does drop. Now, most decent brokerages will have this feature in their app and also in their website. I know that Trading212 and Revolut, which I use, both have this. Okay, hack number seven then is to buy low cost ETFs, things like the S&P 500, because fees paid to brokerages and investment fund managers is basically money down the drain. You can't completely eliminate, you can't completely get away from having to pay any fees, but at least by choosing an ETF, a low cost ETF, you're reducing the amount of fees that you have to pay. Now paying 10 pounds or even 15 pounds a trade might not seem like a lot, but it adds up, especially if you're not investing big amounts, 10, 15 pounds can be a really big percentage. So consider a low cost platform such as Vanguard where their fees on most managed funds are 0.2%, and then they charge 0.15% per year as their account fee, which cover the running costs of their website and support team and things like that. Now, as well as choosing the platform, you're gonna to wanna to consider which ETF to invest in. And an ETF is a group of stocks. And it's a great way to invest because it basically diversifies your portfolio without having to make many transactions. So for example, if you were to invest in the S&P 500 ETF, what you'd be doing is you'd be making one transaction to invest in a fund which holds the 500 largest publicly traded stocks in the United States. And you'd be doing that with one transaction. Instead of if you were to do it individually, you'd have to make 500 transactions. Now there are index funds for basically anything these days. So whatever sector, whatever you're interested in investing in, go and do your research, go and see what ETFs are available before going ahead and buying individual stocks. Okay, now lastly, hack number eight is to earn interest on your Bitcoin or any other crypto. Now this is obviously only gonna be of interest to crypto investors. If that's not your cup of tea, feel free to tune out now, thanks for watching. However, if you are a crypto investor or you plan to be in the near future, then this is a great hack that not many people know about. Now, I've mentioned this before in some of my Bitcoin videos, but earning interest on Bitcoin is just so cool that I couldn't leave it off the list. Okay, now two of the leaders in this space are BlockFi and Genesis, but it's not known how long they're gonna offer these rates for because some people say they're doing it to staple their position in the market. And once they've cemented that, they'll either cut out the interest altogether or reduce it quite heavily. But whilst they're still offering it, we may as well all benefit from it, right? All right then guys, they are my eight stock buying hacks. Some have been for beginners, some for people who are already investing, and then one at the end there for crypto investors as well. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, yeah, see you next week guys, bye.